okay so um this is part two to the previous video i'm going to leave a link here if you haven't checked out that video please head over and watch it because if you don't i mean you're going to miss half of the things that i have went over we're more than half so if you haven't checked out that video like i said i'm going to post it the link here so just go ahead and click on it and check out that video and then i'm going to go ahead now and continue where we left off so please go ahead and hit the like button if you haven't already and subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell and make sure it's turned to all so you'll get all the notifications when i do post content so we're going to go ahead and finish where we left off and we left off on delegating personally with delegating it depends on what it is i don't like delegating because i feel like by the time i try to show someone else how to do something i can go ahead and get it done but um it's i mean things like feeding that's something that your assistant is already going to be doing so feeding um making beds supervising the patient now if if i ask let's just say if the aid is feeding and no 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 let's not say that let's just say if the resident is feeding their self and they are capable of feeding their self but i feel like they need to be supervised because they are a choke risk so I would delegate that to her aide and ask them, hey, can you watch such and such and such and make sure she doesn't choke? So that's something that I would delegate. And I would, you know, occasionally walk in and make sure they're doing okay because sometimes the aides get lazy. They want to be on their phone. They want don't want to be paying attention. They're just sitting in there not really monitoring the resident. So I would delegate that, supervising the patient. Um, And I know some at some facilities, the... CNAs check blood pressures and blood sugars. Now, me personally, I like to check mine before I give the medication just so I can make sure I'm doing it right. Because sometimes they don't be using the blood pressure cuff right. Um, the resident is not being still. They're talking, they're tapping their feet. So I just like to supervise. Um, I mean, I like to do my checks on my own so I won't have to be double checking. Because if I tell, ask, if I delegate to a CNA and ask them to do it, I'm, nine times out of 10, I'm still gonna go and do it again. So it's just pointless for me to delegate. So with these, they have to be on a certain way or they're not gonna take the pressure right. It's either gonna give you a false high or a false low. And let's just say you get a false low and you get them something to make their blood pressure go up. Now you got somebody that blood pressure is too high. So. I just like to do blood pressure and blood sugar checks on my own. But if you do delegate it, you just really have to be feel comfortable with that aid. So some of them been there for a long time and they are very, very good. They can do it really well. So if you have that, you know, you know, confidence in that aid, it's okay to delegate, but you might want to still just double check just so you can be on the safe side because it's going to fall back on you. Either way it go, it's going to fall back on the nurse because you are in charge. So, um, And then another thing when you delegate, make sure you're delegating the right task. Don't delegate them to go give an IM injection. Like, yeah, don't do that. Um, make sure it's the right circumstance. Make sure you're communicating right. And make sure you supervising them right. So don't just tell them to go do something you don't double check. So you, like I said, you still have to supervise it. So you might as well just do it yourself. Like certain, certain stuff. Like I just don't feel like delegating this, you know. And definitely don't delegate anything that requires nursing judgment or um, critical decision making. That is you for the nurse to do so. Um, Make sure you're not, like I said, delegating something that you just know you're not supposed to be delegating because you're trying to be lazy because it's going to fall back on you. You're going to be the one getting in trouble. Um, so, yeah, don't do that. Um, 
And the next thing was working as a team. So, mean you have to be a team player. You have to talk to everyone with respect. You have to communicate with everybody. You have to, like, as far as your aides, if you have some downtime, go ask them, hey, do y'all need help with anything? Try to help them out as much as possible if you can. I know we are pressed for a lot of stuff now so we might not be able to help as much as we can but if you are able to help because we do sometimes get downtime um try to build that rapport with your cna or your fellow nurses um and if you play as a team then you'll get the rest of the staff to play as a team on your shift so just communicate and build that rapport and do what you gotta do y'all do what you have to do. It's not hard, really. I say it for me because I like, maybe because I like talking. And I wouldn't say I'm a people's person, but I'm a people's person. Like, I don't have trouble communicating with people. I don't care if you're younger than me, you're older than me. It's, it's okay with me. I love building that team because I know if something happens, we're going to stick up for each other. We're going to help each other out. And... We're not going to throw each other on the bus. So, build that team. And then, the next thing was trusting your assessment as a new nurse. Um, You just have to have confidence in yourself. Like, that goes with everything. And if you're doing an assessment, kind of get you like, let me see. Get you like a little small notebook like this or something that you can tote in the room with you, keep in your pocket, um, and kind of write down a few things on here that you would do in an assessment. So that means you will have like a little check off. Make sure you check from head to toe, you know, you're feeling, you're looking at their eyes, you're checking everywhere, you're making sure you're checking their lymph nodes. It depends on what they're complaining about. So, um... You can you'll trust it if you are like I said confident. If you have a checklist and you go by that and you make sure you did everything on that checklist, so just make you a small little checklist. So when you're doing the assessment, you'll make sure you touch bases on everything. And if I can, I'm gonna try to make a little. I want to make a little notebook or something. I'm gonna do something for y'all. I'm gonna do something for y'all. I don't know when it's gonna happen, but I'm gonna do it. But um, make sure you have a some type of checklist to make sure you you know you've done the assessment properly. You did everything that you've jotted down. Like I said, depending on what you're assessing. So, but as far as trusting it, I mean, you can go wrong, but you can't really go wrong if you go in and listen to somebody. Oscar Tate. If you hear crackling, you hear crackling. If you don't hear anything, it's clear. You don't hear anything is clear. If you need to go watch a YouTube video on how to Oscar take, go do that before you go in a room. If you need to Google something before you go in, go do it before you go in a room. Like, you cannot, like, you cannot get in trouble or look stupid for trying to double check yourself um, before you do something because you're saving yourself in the end. So, like I said, if you got to look something up, look it up. If you forgot how to give an injection, go look it up. You would rather look it up than to make a mistake. So, for real, y'all, just, just trust yourself. Like I said, if you're unsure about something, look it up, ask questions. Don't try to just go in there and do something and you're unsure. Because that's when you're going to be nervous. You're like, oh, heck, did I do that right? Did I put it in, in the right spot? Did I give her the right medication? Do that pill look supposed to look like that? Google stuff. Ask questions. It's okay, y'all. It is okay. If somebody laugh at you or talk down on you for double checking or looking something up, then they, they the crazy ones. They crazy. They crazy. And most likely they'll be the one that be doing something and getting themselves in trouble. And you'll be, don't laugh at them. But, you know, I told you. <laughs> okay. Um, 
Now, this is a different subscriber, and I believe you pronounce her name. Sela? Sela? S E L A H? I hope I'm saying it right. Okay, so, um, I'm just going to skip around on her questions, but one of them is supervising at the dining area and reading the diet plan cards. So, when you go down to the dining, me, I help out because I can't just sit there and watch them pass out all them trays and do all this stuff. I, I can't just sit there. I have to always be moving around. So, um, and being that I do that, I catch a lot of errors because sometimes the resident will be on thick liquids and the kitchen will send thin liquids. And now you got a resident in the dining room choking. So make sure you are definitely verifying those cards. And where I used to work at one of the facilities, we had to sign the um, diet plan card stating that we did go over it and we did look at it and make sure the resident had on their tray what they supposed to have. Um, if they were mechanical soft, it was mechanical soft on the tray. If it was thick liquids, it was thick liquids on the tray. So you have to verify that. And if you don't know, take your laptop to the dining area with you so you can verify it. And I always take mine anyways because I try to do some documentation while I'm in there having some downtime. So make sure you verify those cards. Make sure you're up walking around checking. If you see a resident that's struggling and it's only two A's in there and you got um, 15 people in there, make sure you are um, trying to help them out help feed um if mr johnny want to throw a roll at miss johnson make sure you handle that do what you got to do help him out whatever the case may be um and definitely if you see a resident struggling with some food help them so you you know you won't have no one to choke if someone falls out you know you have to handle that Call for help from another nurse. If a resident calls, you're going to have to be there to assist with the cold. You're going to have to call help. Um, it's just a lot of things that can happen in the dining area. If you know a resident is supposed to be on oxygen and they're in the dining room without oxygen, you need to make sure you get the oxygen. Call a nurse to say, bring you some oxygen. Uh, so it's just things like that in the dining area. It's, it's really easy, but it can go left quick. So, definitely make sure you are reading those um, diet plan cards and going over and looking at their food, making sure they have on that tray what they're supposed to have and um, making sure the kitchen is doing what they're supposed to do because they mess up a lot. Um, the next thing she asked was protocols for resident passing. Um... So, you, let's just say a resident passes. You have to have the time that you notice that the resident uh, did not have a carotid pulse. You're going to check that. You're going to notate that. Um, you're definitely going to notify the family member. You're going to notify the doctor. You're going to notify the supervisor, the DON, whatever, you know, they require. And most of the time, it's all of them. So, you're going to make sure you contact them and let them know. Um. Yeah, did I say the doctor? You gonna? I said the doctor, right? The doctor, the family member, supervisor, the DON. You are gonna contact all of them. Um. Now I like to give the family time to come up and do what they have to do. Go ahead and let them know first before I contact the funeral home. Um. I won't let them know until the family member has came up and viewed them and said their goodbyes and all that good stuff. Um, then I'll have, you know, I'll contact the funeral home or I'll have the family member contact them. And then it is some documents you have to fill out for the funeral home. Make sure you have that filled out. Um, definitely make sure you document what you notice. You walk in the room, such and such. And I have a pulse. They were not breathing. Um, put what their skin felt like. Uh, how they were positioned in the bed. 
if they were on oxygen, say if it was on or not, like document everything that you noticed. Um, what else can I say about a resident passing? If they are on hospice, it's not too much you have to do because they already do, they'll do it for you. You probably have to, you don't even have to contact the family member. Like they're going to contact the family member. They're going to contact the funeral home. Only thing you really need to do is document. Make sure you um, document when the body was released and that's if hospice was there or not. Definitely make sure you do that. But if hospice is on duty, you don't have to do much at all. So that's about it when it comes to residents passing. You're going to truly, really make sure you document. And make sure you know you inform everybody that you need to inform, especially the family member. And let them have their time uh, with the resident before you, you know, do anything. Just be real respectful because it's just like how you would want somebody to be if you have a little one to pass. So um, that's about it with resident passing. All right, y'all. So. Um, that's all that I have for part two. If anything else is coming in under that post, I will definitely be making a separate video um, discussing those topics. But yeah, like I said, that's it. So um, I hope the information was very helpful. Um, like I said, if you haven't watched the first video, make sure you go ahead and watch part one as well. It'll be linked um somewhere in the video and in the description um yeah i hope everything was helpful um and like i said you guys do not be nervous do not feel like you're unprepared if you need anything just ask questions go google don't beat yourself up about it okay and just make sure you you're covering yourself make sure you are documenting and, you know, doing everything that you have to do to cover yourself because you do not want to lose your license. And you just got them. So make sure you cover yourself and just know that um, you might think you have friends or people that have your back. But at the end of the day, if something happens, people like to throw you under the bus. So make sure you are taking care of yourself and doing what you need to do. Um... I hope you guys liked the video. Please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Watch the ads. And, yeah. I'll see you guys in the next video. Or maybe the live. I don't know. I think I'm ready to go live. I'm not sure. So, yeah. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Do this.